guys, what is up? Happy, happy Sunday. Welcome back to the office. Uh, I am really excited. We are continuing in our series this week and the series is called Shelter in Place. For those of you who may be joining us for your first time or haven't been around for a while, welcome back. We are talking about what it looked like for people in the Bible to go through their own seasons where they had to shelter in place. We're learning what not, what we're learning what they did, and we're also learning about what God did and how God acted and what God was like as those people were sheltering in place. So we've talked about Noah. Last week we talked about David. This week we are jumping into a book called Daniel. And we're going to be spending the next two weeks in Daniel because Daniel tells us two stories of sheltering in place. Today we're going to be talking about these three dudes with funny names. You ready? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Try and spell them. You probably won't spell them correctly. We're going to be talking about these three guys, what their shelter in place looked like, what they learned and what we can learn from them, and what God looked like and how God showed up as they sheltered in place, and what we can learn from God in that. Overall, we're going to be talking about how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remained faithful as they sheltered in place. As we jump in, as always, we're going to pray. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you that in the midst of all the questions, in the midst of all the chaos and the weirdness, that you are here with us. Lord, we just thank you that you are a God who is present with us each and every day, that you help us through the big things and the small things, and that you help us when things are tough or when things are easy. And Lord, we just ask that we would learn from you today. In your name we pray, amen. Question for you guys. What have you had to give up during this season of COVID, during our own shelter in place? What have you had to give up? Turn to a parent, text your small group leader. You have five seconds to tell people what you've given up. We're ready, go. Let's be real, right? We've all had to give up something or things because of this year. I was thinking about my own life, right? I've had to give up seeing friends and family, sad. Had to give up seeing my little nephew get born and grow up. He's like seven months now, sad. Had to give up traveling. You guys have had to give up school. I mean, you're doing online school, not the same, right? You probably had to give up extracurricular activities. Maybe you, you had a family holiday you always went on. We've all had to give up things miss out on things because of this season. And that can be a little bit of a bummer. Today we're going to be looking at this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And some of you may have heard this story before or know their names, which is awesome. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is a story of choosing to not give up something that's really important. Choosing to be faithful and how that faithfulness played into their own shelter in place moment. As we dive in, we're going to be looking at the book of Daniel. So if you have your Bibles, feel free to open it up. We're going to be reading a pretty big chunk of Daniel 3. The story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego starts in or is present in this chapter, Daniel, Daniel 3. And we start Daniel 3 by meeting the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. And if you've seen the VeggieTales movie, you'll know how this story goes. King Nebuchadnezzar is this king, and he decides that he wants to make all of his people, all the people in his country, worship this idol, this lowercase g god. And so Nebuchadnezzar makes an idol uh, in, um, in this really fancy gold, and he decides that he wants everybody to worship this god, this idol. And so he decrees that after this idol is made, he's going to make everyone in his community worship it. And so we see Daniel 3, and specifically in verse 6, uh, how Nebuchadnezzar made everyone bow down and worship an idol. Why is that an issue? Or why is that important in this story? Well, we have King Nebuchadnezzar as one character, and on the other side, we have this group of guys, these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
decided not to worship because they already had a faith. So they were Jewish in the way that we understand it, and that meant they followed Yahweh, or God, or the God of the Old Testament that we read about, our God. And Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego decided and wanted to remain faithful to God, despite knowing that them not bowing down and worshiping to King Nebuchadnezzar's God would mean that they could potentially get in trouble. They remained faithful, even in the midst of all the chaos in their shelter in place. So King Nebuchadnezzar says, everyone's going to worship this idol. It's a super important thing. Everybody in the community is going to do it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, eh, we already have our own God. No thanks. Well, they all get to this ceremony in the community together. And Nebuchadnezzar says, all right, it's time. Everyone bow down and worship. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego don't. They don't bow down. They don't worship this king. And that's where we begin to see the major part of the action. In chapter 3, verses 13, we see Nebuchadnezzar get super angry. And the Bible says this. Furious with rage. Love that. Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is this true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you serve... Uh, that you do not serve my God or worship the image of God I have set up. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn or list all these other instruments, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I have made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from your hand. King Nebuchadnezzar had heard that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't worshiping the false god weren't worshiping the lowercase g God. And so Nebuchadnezzar goes and, and talks to them. And he says, is it true what I've heard that you aren't worshiping this God? Nebuchadnezzar is super angry. He's like, everybody's doing it. This is what I told you to do. I'm the king. If you don't, I'm going to throw you into this giant pizza oven. Okay, not a pizza oven, but that's what I imagine it as. Into this burning furnace. Pizza oven. Well, guess what? The Daniel the chapter in Daniel doesn't stop with this. Right. Let's dive back in at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, pizza oven, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. King Nebuchadnezzar, super angry, is like, you have to do this. I'm the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who very easily could have been like, oh yeah, sorry, my bad. We'll, we'll bow down next time, right? Very easily just kind of done what the king was telling him to do. Well, they decided to be faithful to God. They decided to lean not into fear, but into faithfulness. And they say, King Neb, we're not afraid of what the outcome is going to be. And we have faith that our God will save us, will rescue us. And even if God doesn't, even if we burn up, we will never bow down to your false God. So King Nebuchadnezzar was furious. That's a trend for him. In verse 19, it says he was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, real hot. And he commanded the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes and trousers and turbans and clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the furnace crazy story. Love Daniel. So King Nebuchadnezzar wants all of his people to worship this god, this idol. And he gets told that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego aren't. He gets mad and he tells them, you have to do this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were like, our god is bigger than any god you can create, Nebuchadnezzar. And we're not going to. Nebuchadnezzar was so angry that he was like, I'm not going to wait and have you worship. I'm going to turn up this pizza oven real hot. All right, this fire. I should stop calling it a pizza oven. I'm going to turn up this fire really hot. So hot. And I'm going to throw you in. Because I'm furious. 
And we read that these three guys get thrown into the furnace, to the giant fiery pit. And in fact, the, the pizza oven, the fire is so hot that it kills not only, uh, that, that, that it kills the guards around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The fire was so, so hot, it burned everybody up. Well, if we know the story, we know that something pretty amazing happened. Let's read about it. In verse 24 in Daniel chapter 3, we read this. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement, and he asked his advisors, Weren't there three men we, that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. Nebuchadnezzar said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar was watching all of this happen. The guys get thrown into the fire and he saw his soldiers get burned up. And a moment later, he looks back into the furnace and he sees these guys unbound, clothes fo- st- still on fully, walking around the fire. And he doesn't just see the three, he sees four. And he says the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Pretty cool. Verse 26 says this, Nebuchadnezzar approached the opening of the blazing furnace and he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the, all the political people around them and the royal advisors crowded them. And they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies or their hair. They didn't harm the robes, nothing. In fact, there was no smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses burned, uh, sorry, their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. It's a crazy story. I love the Bible. So what is happening? And how do we understand this as a shelter-in-place moment? Well, when the three guys were thrown into fire, into the pit, they were there. We don't get to read, obviously, about what they were saying or who the first, fourth person was, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego sheltered in place in a burning furnace, in a burning fire. And they went into this fire. Uh, they sheltered in this fire with faithfulness. It's kind of a crazy thing to think about. They had no idea how God would act. They had no idea what would happen. And yet throughout this story, we see them trusting and being faithful to God. Trusting and faithful that even though they were literally in a pit of fire, that God would be with them. That God would be present with them. And we see them surviving this moment. Um, We see not only them surviving, but we see that their actions propelled King Nebuchadnezzar to understand how important their God was and to glorify God through them by making a decree for the entire nation to recognize this God, to recognize our God the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And King Nebuchadnezzar not just didn't just recognize God, but then he also, as you read at the end of this, promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave them a, a promotion. Their job was cooler. All of this because they were faithful. All of this because they didn't fear the fire. They approached the fire with faithfulness. And they approached their very short shelter in place knowing and relying and trusting in God. Here's what I think we learn about their shelter in place moment. It was shorter than ours, but still just as important. I think from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can learn that at times we may face big challenges. Frankly, this year for a lot of us has been a big challenge. Those challenges can be our shelter in place like we're having, or it can be other challenges, other things that may pull us away from God. 
we experience these challenges, but we can choose faithfulness rather than to lean into our own fears. It would have been really easy for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to just do what Nebuchadnezzar asked them to do. I think sometimes in our own lives, we justify things like that. Like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm still gonna believe in God, but I'm gonna worship this other idol. Or I'm gonna bow down to this king just, just because it's, it keeps me safe. Oh, I'm gonna still love God, but I'm gonna talk badly about my neighbor or talk badly about a friend because it's funny. I'm gonna trust God, but I'm gonna choose to disrespect my parents because they're being annoying. Uh, I love God, but I'm gonna choose to do this other thing. Listen, we're all gonna, at times, make mistakes and we're all gonna lean into our sinful nature sometimes. But at other times, as we see here, we can choose to be faithful. And we can take a step back and we can choose to listen for God and to God and make the right choice. And we can know that God is with us in our flames, in the flame, when, no matter what, when we make the choice to be faithful, God is present. We can choose as we're still sheltering or hiding out or whatever we're calling this COVID stuff, we can choose to rely and trust in God and to be faithful to God, even when it's tough, even when it may cost us a little, even when we could get thrown into a big pizza oven. Not gonna happen. We can learn from Shavak, Meshach, and Abednego that in the midst of our shelter in place, we can be faithful in whatever way that looks like for us. Well, we've also been talking about what we learn about God from the shelter in place stories. And I think some of the things that we see in God here are things that we've seen in Noah's story and in David's story as well. The first is that God has a plan. Now God's timing was pretty crazy in this story, right? He didn't like close the door before the fire or find another way. He literally made them walk into the fire before his plan was complete. Uh, God has a plan. Sometimes that plan takes a little bit longer than we would hope for, or it takes a different turn. Um, but ultimately we know that God has a plan, just like God had a plan for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we can trust in that. Sometimes that plan means that God shows up last minute. But God ultimately has a plan. And God not only has a plan, but that God also has a purpose for all of this. We get to learn things about God along the way, and we get to learn things about ourselves along the way. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a very short shelter in place, but a very important one. Their shelter in place helps us learn not only that God is with us and present and has a plan, but that also that we can choose faithfulness even when it's difficult even when it feels like this year has gone on for way too long, and it has for some of us. Even when we're annoyed or stressed or overwhelmed, we can rest in the knowledge that God is with us and we can spend time with God and faithfulness and grow with God and ultimately make it out of this fiery furnace without any scratch on our head, without any of our clothes burn, without the smell of smoke. I love this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because it shows us how God is powerful and present. So friends, as we continue in this week, may we shelter in place with faithfulness. May we lean into God and may we rely on God when we're feeling great and when we're feeling low. We're going to be talking more about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We should probably get pizza or something, right? Uh, no pizza. We'll be talking about them in small group. I hope to see you there. Remember to choose faithfulness this week, friends, even if that week is tough. We love you guys. We'll see you in small group. Have a good Sunday.